Hello and welcome to Alberta Live, brought to you by Fuse Logic TV. I'm Sunita Kolzuchi, and with me in the studio is Hugh McDonald. Uh, he is uh, a, a part of the Alberta, uh, sorry, he's member of the Alberta Legislature from Edmonton Gold Bar. Of course, he represents the Alberta Liberals. And uh, he's got a lot of titles, but let me rattle off some of them. Among other things, Mr. McDonald is also the critic for Finance and Enterprise, Treasury Board, and uh, Solicitor General and Public Safety. Uh, he also served as the official opposition critic for Agriculture, Food and Rural Development, Energy, the Heritage Savings Trust Fund, Human Resources, and Employment and Government Services. Uh, that's a lot, lot of portfolios uh, you've been keeping track of. Welcome to the show, Mr. McDonald. Recently, you put in your hat into the Alberta leadership race, and um, that makes, that brings the total to four, uh, and that out of, uh, what, nine members, nine MLAs in the legislature? Eight. Eight? So isn't that a bit of a crowd? Not really, uh, and first I would like to say hello, and thank you for inviting me to participate in your show. Uh, certainly it's not a crowd. To me, the, um, there are four candidates, or uh, the other three uh, candidates besides myself, uh, I view them as very competitive, and I certainly would say that uh, I'm confident if they're elected, they could do the job. It shows with four candidates that there is a lot of interest in the Alberta Liberal Party, and it also shows that we have a very uh, bright future. We've had a proud past. We've made many contributions to uh, the political discussion, and uh, we've made many contributions to public policy in this province in the past, and I think we have a bright future. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're as old as Alberta, perhaps, and you've been initially in power, but you've not had such a smooth ride uh, through, especially the last few years. Your, your numbers in the legislature are just eight, as you said uh, mm -hmm. right now. You corrected me. And uh, does, is this symptomatic of something that's inherently wrong? Because, you know... You are losing numbers. Uh, no, not really. Uh, each and every, if you look at the history of each and every political party uh, that has lasted, you are correct, for over 100 years in, in this province, we are the oldest party. Others have come and they have gone, but in one form or another, we have remained since we formed the first government uh, in 1905 until now. And we have been official opposition of this province since 1993. Uh, other parties have come and gone, but we remain, and we uh, plan to remain, and we plan to uh, get organized and make a significant contribution to future public policy discussions and policies in this province. So tell me, why are so many leaders leaving? I mean, you know, if you've had a change of leadership and your current leader is, is resigning, stepping down as well, what what is it, uh, how do people interpret this, that nobody stays at the top, at, I mean, at the top of the Liberal Party for more than maybe two years, three years? Uh, the same could be said about the progressive conservative uh, government. Uh, Ed Stelmack is leaving quite quickly after having one of the largest majorities in the province's history. But uh, with us, being leader of the official opposition in Alberta is probably the toughest political job in the entire country. It's very difficult. And you got to remember that we've had one party in power for over two generations or over 40, 40. years. And that's um, a one-party state, essentially, uh, to have one party remain in power. I mean, it happens in Cuba, it happened <laughs> in Mexico, and it happens in Alberta. So uh, the official opposition leader's job is a very tough job, and we recognize that, and perhaps that's the number one reason why there's such a turnover. You're right, I have had uh, five leaders since 1997 yeah. while I've sat in the Legislative Assembly proudly as an Alberta Liberal. What is the toughest part? You said it's tough being the official opposition party in a conservative uh, province like Alberta. What's been tough about it? Uh, what's been tough? Um, people have a lot to date. Uh, voters have cut the conservatives a lot of slack. Uh, the conservatives have really uh, politically messed up a lot of files, including health care, the Alberta Heritage Savings Trust Fund, uh, a program like the Temporary Foreign Workers, for instance. Uh, this spring, we see uh, public school boards being told that they're going to have to increase class sizes and lay off teachers. 
Um, what's frustrating for me is the fact that uh, the electors here, the voters, seem to be so willing to cut slack to the progressive conservatives even whenever they mess up big time. Uh, like with Alberta Health Services, I mean, what other jurisdiction would tolerate a government without doing a cost-benefit analysis to see if the Alberta Health Services Board would work? What group would allow a $12 billion budget to be experimented with the way Alberta Health Services was whenever we fired the nine regional health authorities and the other two boards and created this super monster bureaucratic institution or organization to administer health, public health care. I, I mean, uh, how the severity of that mistake should be one reason and one reason alone why this government does not continue to have the confidence of the voters. But to be honest, you know, people may say the same about your party. They may say that you've not, as an official opposition party, you've not been able to shake up the uh, status quo. For instance, the last election that we had just a few years mm -hmm. back, you remember, uh, you know, the voter turnout was pathetic. That's a clear indication that there was this void there that needed to be filled up, and your party perhaps could not fill that void up. Perhaps there's something internally that needs to be changed. You, you have a, a point, but I think it's a stretch to uh, blame the Alberta Liberal Party on the lower voter turnout rate in this province. Uh, in this province, in the run-up to the last election, there was not an enumeration. It was one of the most poorly run elections in the history of this province. That's why people didn't come out to vote. Many people did line up to vote, and they couldn't. Uh, others were sent to the wrong polling station. So I think it's a real stretch, with no disrespect, to blame that on the Alberta Liberal Party. I mean, the chief electoral officer at the time made a report with over 100 recommendations in it as to how we could improve voter turnout rate in this province. And I agree with you, it needs to be done. And uh, many of the people who stay home, perhaps they will vote uh, for the Alberta Liberals. But in conclusion, I would like to add that there are those that say we do not make a difference to uh, public policy in this province, but over the last four years, this government has racked up $10 billion in deficits, and the only reason why they can do that is they stole one of our fine ideas, which was the creation of a sustainability fund or a stabilization fund, which uh, is to save money during the good times from non-renewable resource revenue so that if the price goes down or the economy slows down, we have money set aside without it's digging into the heritage. Now. It's dwindling down, yeah. but uh, that was one of our yeah. ideas. A and we're real lucky in this province that uh, the government finally saw the wisdom of this idea and adopted it because we would be in real financial difficulty if that policy had not been started. Uh, going back to recommendations, you said that some recommendations have been made regarding the changes in yes, the you bet. Yeah. Have they been have they been adapted? Uh, sorry, adopted? Have they been taken up or? Uh, they no, still they, the uh, no, they have not. Uh, they have not been adopted. In fact, uh, the government wouldn't renew the contract for uh, the chief um, elections officer uh, or the chief of elections Alberta, the officer in charge of all this. They read their recommendations and essentially. Politically, they fired them. So, so what, what were the recommendations which uh, would make a difference? Oh, there was a lot of different recommendations uh, around enumerations, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that everyone who is eligible uh, is on the list. Uh, there was talk of changing polling hours, changing polling locations, um, alerting people in many different ways that, hey, there's an election on if you don't know, and you can vote. Uh, there was many, many, many different examples, including the training of the um, elections officers. Uh, in fact, in the, before the last election, there were accusations made that the Premier's office was appointing the returning officers for each of the 83 constituencies. They had to be vetted through the Premier's office, and that had to be stopped. And uh, the elections Alberta office has to be independent of the Premier's office and the Progressive Conservative Party. This is not, uh, contrary to popular opinion, uh, permittable in a democracy, and this is not a one-party state. They don't have the right to do that. Uh, and that is, uh, I'm proud to say, that has happened. Uh, 
the uh, appointment of the returning officers has been hopefully removed from uh, control of the, from the Premier's office and placed where it belongs over with uh, Elections Alberta. So that would be uh, an example of a recommendation that was made. Um, how would the how would it impact you now, the fact that the country is turning conservative, or so they say? Uh, we had this report from the Manning Institute just yesterday, I guess, or the day before. Yes. And also the fact that the elections have been essentially won by the conservatives and uh, and in a liberal holding like Ontario. I mean, that is, Ontario is being a liberal stronghold. So what do you think these kind of changes within the electoral system mean to, to your party in a conservative uh, Well, province? first off, uh, um, this is a conservative province. Uh, it votes uh, conservative federally and provincially, but uh, it will change. Uh, I'm confident it, it will change. And contrary to what um, um, the Manning Report may say, I would remind you that British Columbia is ruled by a liberal provincial government. Ontario is. Quebec is. PEI is. Uh, 60, over 60% 60 of uh, the population of this country is um, ruled provincially, and in some cases very well, by a Liberal government. The uh, Liberal Party is also official opposition in uh, Newfoundland, in New Brunswick, and also in um, Alberta. So we have uh, this idea that the Liberal Party is dead and this country has gone conservative <laughs> or blue is um, an exaggeration by some political pundits. So I understand your 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 passion towards the liberals because mm -hmm. you've been such a liberal. I mean, you've been consistently a liberal. You bet. But the reality does point out to the fact that um, NDP has taken over as the official opposition, and things don't augur well for your party. Not. Uh, I not, mean that uh, yeah, federally. Uh, that's um, that's a perception, and, and people um, are welcome to that opinion, but. In 1984, we had 40 seats, around 40 seats. Yeah. Nine years later, we returned with Mr. Kretchen federally and formed a majority government. Um, the Conservatives uh, in 1993 went down to two seats, one held in New Brunswick and one held in Quebec, by now the Liberal Premier of Quebec, Mr. Charest. Yeah. So uh, with politics, times uh, change. and. I think it is good uh, for political parties to spend some time uh, in opposition. I I see no problem with that. I but see part of that as uh, as um, I see that as renewal. But uh, some say that name by itself is an albatross around your neck because of the fact that Mr. Trudeau, as the Manning report points out, I mean, it says that that was the biggest negative to happen to your party. Even though you don't, ha you, I mean, I'm told that your party at the provincial level does not have so much of a linkage with the federal liberals, but they say that that's been the biggest negative because of the energy policy, you know, uh, that he adopted. Um, and so, what do you say about that? Um, that's conservative uh, spin, uh, <laughs> certainly. I mean, what do you expect uh, the Manning Institute to say? Uh, they have been trying since the days of reform in 1988. Uh, they've been campaigning against uh, the Liberal government. And now, you know, they've transferred themselves from reform to Canadian Alliance to a majority conservative government. The West is now in. Uh, we are controlling uh, and carrying through with public policies in Ottawa, and we'll see how they do. We will see uh, how they do. And I'm confident, uh, in fact, I think it's good for democracy that um, more than one party gets a chance to form a government. The Conservatives have worked hard. They've gotten organized across uh, the country, and the majority of citizens who voted gave them a majority. And let's see what they do in the next four years, and then we will uh, have not only the New Democrats, but you'll also have the Liberals, and who knows what will happen in Quebec, offering okay. alternatives and other public policy choices, and we will see what happens federally the next time. And maybe there will be a change. Who knows? Who knows, yeah. But coming back to your party, now recently you amended some rules. Tell us about that. Uh, apparently now it's open, uh, open voting for the leadership. Uh, yes. Um, our leadership race, which is going to go on all summer and conclude with a vote on September 10th, is now open to any Alberta citizen who is eligible to be on the voters list. 
uh, they can take out a registered uh, supporter designation from the party and they can participate in this. So our party now allows you to become both a member by buying a $5 membership and participating at the constituency level and participating in all events and that occur within the party in a calendar year. And then you can become a designated supporter and vote not only for the leader but for the candidate of your choice at the uh, nomination before the next provincial election. So how would you keep count of, uh, you know, anybody could come in, maybe he, he or she's a conservative and just... Yes, uh, they could, yeah. uh, that is um, a potential, uh, that uh, could happen, um, and um, the majority of people who were present in Calgary at our meeting on May 29th, they certainly decided that this was the route we uh, would go in, and the majority voted for that. I certainly didn't support it. Uh, I think um, you should be a, a member of a political party in order to vote, a registered supporter. I'm not so sure how all this is going to work, but uh, you got to respect uh, the majority of votes that were uh, cast there, and they decided in the interest of the party this is what they would like to do. So um, I'm quite willing to live with it. Uh, despite what you, I mean, you're pretty optimistic about the party, and understandably so, but you, in a recent interview, you said, and Evan, I'd request you to drop that newspaper, please, that of 18 riding associations in Edmonton, nine don't have people authorized to sign official documents. In Calgary, 14 ridings of 23 are without these key party volunteers. So how bad is your party structure? Um, it's a lot better than the New Democrats. <laughs> uh, they would have a lot... They would have a lot more problems uh, at the organizational level than we do, but I will, yes, it is a major problem, and that's one of the reasons why I'm running for leader. I have a history in the party. I have the experience and the know-how to organize the party and ensure that we are organized at the constituency level. In any place where the Alberta Liberal Party is organized, at the constituency level, we compete. We usually... Um, run very, very strong campaigns, provincial election after provincial election. And that's what I want to do if I'm chosen leader, is organize the party at the constituency level. I uh, was shocked and it was sobering to look at our financial statements and to realize that um, we were so weak at, at the constituency level. In we fact, have I wanted no to ask you, how would you bring about the funding, which is such a difficult thing to... Uh, funds, uh, regardless of which political party, yes. funds follow uh, political support and activity. And if we get active, I'm confident that, uh, and people realize, hey, uh, the Liberals are serious about providing uh, alternatives. Uh, they want to be a different choice. Because right now, you have only two choices, realistically, in this province. You have the Wild Rose Alliance, uh, which is getting organized and they're raising funds and I admire their hard work. You have the Wild Rose Alliance and then you have the Conservatives who are muddling along after 40 years in power with this attitude that they have a divine right to govern. And uh, I think if we uh, get our act together and get organized and provide a choice, another choice for the Alberta voters, um, they will support us. But, uh, you know, the fear, or rather the apprehension, is that you, your party has started sounding like the Alberta party. Let me quote to you, Mr. David Swan, your present leader, who has recently resigned, uh, at least announced yes. his resignation. We're building the big tent party many Albertans are looking to get involved in right now. The next step is listening to these new supporters. They are not names in the database. They are the people who will set the course for this party. This smacks like a quote from the Alberta party, the big listen. You know, they've been drumming this thing about the big listen. What's the differentiation, the demarcation between you and them? For one thing, we have policies. Uh, no one knows what the Alberta party stands for. In fact, one of the individuals who was running in, in the race for the leadership of that party dropped out. A guy from Calgary dropped out because they wouldn't let him talk about policy. So um, that's the big difference between us and them. We have uh, concrete, defined policies. Um, the public knows where we stand on public education. They certainly know where we stand on public health care. 
They certainly know where we stand on uh, development in the north. Hopefully they under, uh, understand our policies on electricity deregulation. Uh, we have come out and we have told the citizens where we stand on issues. The Alberta Party has not and will not. And um, that's the big difference between but, us and them. But you know, your members have left. Let's face it, they've left and they're part of the Alberta Party. So there must be some disconnect somewhere. Uh, no, the people that left our party were uh, in senior management positions in the 2004 and 2008 elections. We did not do well. That's obvious. You just have to open a newspaper to figure that one out. Uh, they weren't successful organizing our party, and uh, they've decided to go over to the um, Alberta party, and that's their choice. Um, you know, they they can go out the door and um, be my guest. But uh, it's not only um, liberal people that are over there. I mean, the, the the newly elected leader of that party is a former New Democrat candidate in Hinton. Uh, the person doing the organization for them uh, right now in our constituency of Edmonton Goldbar is the New Democrat candidate in the last election. You have conservatives like Ken Chapman and Chris Lavoisier who are involved in that. So there's a perception in the media that this is just uh, disgruntled liberals, but that's so far from the truth. The reality is there's New Democrats over there and conservatives. But then your party too has a conservative and he's standing for the leadership race. How can such an antithetical stance of a person who's been a tough conservative, in fact he's, uh, you know, he's been a conservative for some time now, and he suddenly switches over and suddenly heads the Liberal Party. So you just can't say that... No, he was kicked out by Ed Stelman. <laughs> I mean, he was... Uh, he was expelled, and Whatever he wasn't the, the first one. I mean, you a, your party accepted him with open uh, arms. No, he's still sitting as an independent. He's still an independent member. We have a rule uh, in our party that you have to sit as an independent. Uh, you just can't join us. He he is allowed to run for leader. We're very open, but uh, he has chosen to sit as an independent because of our rules. And Mr. Stelmack. Um, he didn't bolt out of there. He was forced out of there, and Mr. Stelmack also forced out uh, three of the Wild Rose members, Heather yes. Forsythe, Rob Anderson, and Mr. Boutelier from Fort McMurray. So um, it is unfair to characterize um, Mr. Sherman or Dr. Sherman as, uh, you know, just coming out of the blue to join us. He was forced out of that caucus. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm talking about the ideological stance. I mean, I have a problem being a conservative and a liberal. I mean, you know, at the same time, mm -hmm. it's, it, I mean, it, I, I don't know. I mean, it's that's one of the points that I wanted to raise. And the second point I guess I want to ra raise is that do you see a, a little bit of a shift in your policy stand because you have the NDP, which is left of center, and you have the Alberta Party, which is which calls itself center of center, and you call yourself right of center, if I'm not mistaken, or center center. Everybody is running this race of being the center party. What what's so enchanting about being in the center of things? It's old hat. It's passe, isn't uh, it? No, no, certainly um, it is not. Uh, the conservatives would like to brand us as uh, you know uh, pushing the New Democrats into the uh, left hand ditch on the road. Uh, but, no, we have always been a centrist uh, party. I mean, a centrist party talks about saving money during the good times so we have enough to fund key public but programs. But don't you think it's time for that radical change? You need to invest people's money in, in, in the kind of things that the banks are doing. I mean, I think the whole concept of government is so is so steeped in, you know... You have in, in obviously concept. not read our <laughs> policy from the last election where we wanted to set up endowment funds not only for the arts, but for the universities, uh, certainly to provide um, a bright economic future for future generations of Albertans who may not be uh, living here whenever we're producing so much energy. Uh, that was part of our policy. That's very centrist. Uh, the New Democrats couldn't match But times that. have changed. You need, you need to take some rough decisions. You need to say, okay, environment. I mean, this is not what, I mean, mm -hmm. it, this is what I feel. and. Some people may say that uh, there is a tussle between environment and energy. Who uh, you may say, no, no, I want both. But sometimes the decisions are not so easy. It's tough. So if you just get ideologically stuck in that quagmire of ideology, don't you think it's being a stick in the mud and not looking at issues as they are? Pardon no, my being uh, so uh, you about this. Uh, no, that's fine. Um, you have. Um 
<laughs> you have a number of uh, issues there, but I certainly would say with the development of the oil sands, there is not a jurisdiction in the world that wouldn't have a resource like that under their um, buried within the boundaries of their jurisdiction that would not develop it, that would not develop it. And we are developing that resource and we want to do it in an environmental sustainable way. Uh, and some of the things that are going on here, contrary to what the environmentalists may think, are um, very good. For instance, this government here, to their credit, initiated a small uh, $15 a ton um, carbon capture. You can call it whatever you want, but it's a carbon tax uh, on uh, Fort McMurray on the oil sands developments. Uh, there is CO2 sequestration going yes. on here um, that hopefully uh, will work. I think we should slow down uh, the government um, money that's going into this to ensure that it works. It seems to be working in other places where they're trying it. Uh, so th those would be examples, uh, I don't know whether you agree with me or not, of centrist policies to ensure that we develop the resource and we do it in an environmentally sensitive way because we enjoy in this province, and you can call me centrist if you want, we enjoy uh, low rates of taxation with our personal tax rates and with our corporate tax rates. And if we are to continue to be a low tax jurisdiction that way, we have to generate government revenue somewhere. And that somewhere, in my view, is from royalties, from non-renewable resources. And I, I, I'm sorry if that's centrist. I'm not going to apologize to anyone for doing that. Thank you so much for being here with You're us very today. There's welcome. so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, I enjoy we it. hope to have you back again. Okay. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.